Councilman, welcome to a special edition of Guyana's Oil and You. I am your hostess this evening, Senior Journalist of Kaichiro News, Kiana Wilberg. And this evening we have with us a distinguished guest, the Vice President of Guyana, Dr. Barra Jack Deal. And he is joined by the publisher of Kaichiro News, Mr. Glenn Lau. Helping me co-host tonight's proceedings will be my colleague, senior journalist as well, Mr. Kemal King. So tonight we are going to dive into a really uh, insightful discussion here um, on Guyana's oil industry and looking at what the PPP has done since it has assumed office and what its plans going forward for 2021. So, Dr. Jack Dio, I'd like to get started on the issue of local content. Uh, about three hours before you got here, I would have done a story, which is going to be published tomorrow, that highlights the fact that Guyana would have to accept as correct ExxonMobil's local content costs for 2015 to 2018. And this is based on an IMF recommendation which said that if Guyana fails to make use of its two-year deadline to audit costs, then it would have to accept whatever is reported in a particular uh, fiscal year as correct. Dr. Jagdiel, what does the People's Progressive Party administration intend to do about this state of affairs, and what measures do you expect to put in place so that we don't find ourselves accepting 2019 costs as correct? Yeah, well, you're absolutely correct about the provisions in the contract. And um, what, what we have to do is to build the capability to do audits close within the period specified by the contract. Unfortunately, the country has not done that. So what happened is that only in November 2019, the government hired a firm to audit, it's a firm called Market, to audit the pre-contract costs and costs up to 2017. Okay. So far, about $1.6 billion of the cost. That's pre-contract costs of $460 million, mm -hmm. plus uh, about um, $1.2 billion from the development and exploration costs up to 2017 has been audited. The audit pr provided for three reports, an initial report, an interim report, and then a final report. So the initial report was produced in early 2020. And on July 30th, that is two days before the election results were, the new president was sworn in, uh, market submitted the final report. Okay. Now that final report is they skipped the interim report and we have a big issue with them because the interim report as is normal for, uh, for any audit has to go to the company for them to make comments yes. before the audit is finalized. So since then we have some disagreements with market and so we're they have now converted the final report which they submitted to a draft report. So once we go through the details of that, that will be sent to ExxonMobil for their comments and then the audit would be finalized. There are some adverse findings already about what Exxon and some other companies claim on pre-contract costs. But, but that would only await the finalization of the audit before we seek to, or, or we get Exxon's comment on this so that those costs are not included in cost oil. So you're absolute, but, but going forward now, we have to build a capability where we can audit as they spend, yes. not, not to wait like six years or seven years. And uh, we are busy doing that. We're, we're going to do it with GRE, mm -hmm. a capability within GRE, as well as using some consultants in the short term to build that capability whilst we can train Guyanese, more and more Guyanese to be 
um, familiar with the nuances of an uh, oil audit, which is slightly different than a financial audit. So that is it. it uh, it's not local content. You mentioned local content. Local content is separate. What happened in the early years is gone. Mm -hmm. But now um, we can talk a little bit about local content later. I don't want to right. speak for too long on, on this. But the, this is what we are working on now. For currently, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The question you asked the vice president is, are Guyana accepting these billions with loopholes that was inside the contract that the vice president and his party would have signed on to, which gives Guyana a two-year span to, to, in, to audit these things. My question to Mr. Vice President, you guys have been there in the opposition and you, for almost five years. Um, you guys could not have seen that here, this is the, this is the contract we signed on to, and if we don't correct it, or if we don't get the ball rolling, what Exxon will be throwing at us? You know, if you have a business with somebody, Kian, and the people say, listen, you've got two years to check my bills. And if you don't check my bills, you have to accept what I give you. Then that is, that is something very critical, Mr. Vice President. This is not, this is not about pre-contract cost of 450 million or, or from up to 2015 and the rest we're talking about, drop that in the millions or the hundreds of millions. Uh, we are talking about billions of dollars since then, from then to now, in, in, in field development costs. Why are we, why, why haven't the, the, the coalition government and your party and your government haven't addressed such a serious matter to date? And we are still left, we are still left to, to accept, as we speak here now, many more hundreds of millions throw, throwing at us now. So, so let me respond to that. Yeah. Um, first of all, the agreement, the, own, own, the audit, the two years timeline That's right. kicks in from the time you sign the production agreement which was signed by Trotman in 2016. We were in opposition. So we could not have done anything to deal with the audit. The government at that time could have hired a company immediately to audit the pre-contract costs because at that time when it was signed, then you only had pre-contract costs. Right, the the contract pre-production contract cost. So, it, had it hired a company in 2016, then we would not have had this conversation today. Had it built the capability within the four years from 2016 to 2020, we we would not have be, had this conversation today. Now we've been in office for a few months and already we're working at building the capability. So going forward, we do not find ourselves in a similar situation. That is the reality of it. And so far, that's why I acknowledge, you've had between eight to nine billion dollars of expenditure made so far of the 20 billion program for the three wells. So only 1.6 billion has been audited, and we're at this stage with the, the draft audit. So I agree that the ball was dropped, but who dropped the ball? We were in opposition every single day fighting to, to get this done. We spoke about it numerous times about the, this is where the government can exercise effective control. Because when you, when they make crude estimates, so for example, Lisa won, the first estimates that came in was $4.4 billion or so. And then when you actually, the project was done, 
it dropped by just under a billion dollars. The actual expenditure dropped by a billion dollars. Uh, the 3.6, 3.7 or whatever they spent or so, is that real? The only way you would know if it is real is if you do the audit. I, I want to respond to you. Yeah. Um, coming on this program, a few friends asked me, Glenn, you, you're heading into a wire room. And I said, no, it's not a wire room. It's a solution room. I want to change Kaicho News into maybe a solution room so that we can have decent, honest, and truthful discussion on our assets of this land just to benefit the people of this country. I listened to you just now, and the, the minute you start bringing in coalition into it, like I'm not feeling very comfortable. No, 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 but... You know, but no, 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 let me finish. Let but me finish. how could you... you... Let me finish, let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. Please. When you bring in coalition, and you were out there, you were actually seeing what's taking place, and you knew what was going on. Where were your, where were your yourself and your party um, um, mouth over, over, over all what's taking place? And I'll, 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 I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. You being an economist and an accountant, then I just went to market um, school. But you had to know because the newspapers, this newspapers, Mr. President, have been. I've been showing these things, writing about these things all these years, exposing and, and writing and saying, listen guys, we are in a dilemma. And not a single word from you or your party. We are well, including, including a response from the coalition government. But, that, but that you're absolutely there. wrong. And I don't know where uh, you lived. That's it. Where that's you it. lived in the past five years. But we spoke several times about pre-contract costs and the need to audit this and we said this is one of the areas that we believe that the country could reduce reduce the, the cost oil and uh, therefore maximize profit oil. We spoke about it numerous times, so I don't know which country you are living in. It's not only Kaicho News that has been speaking about this, but you're asking me what we did, and I just told you that we couldn't have done anything about the audits. We couldn't hire the firm. We are not in power. They had to hire a firm from 2016 to do the audits. They had to build a capability. We spoke about it. We criticized it. But now we have the authority that is, it falls on us to build that capability. And in a short space of a few months, we're already taking charge of this issue. And so we, I can't answer for the coalition. You should ask them why didn't they hire in 2016 someone to do the audit? Mr. Why only November 2019? Mr. President, just a few, a month ago or six weeks ago, you were asked that very question mm -hmm. at a press conference. Yes. And I remember the exact words you, you used in giving your answer. You, you told the reporters, Kiana, please, can you, you remember his word? Systematic, in a, in a systematic system? No, 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 you I were, never systematic you said you were, system. You, 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 have, you, have, you, have been, you have been auditing the oil companies systematically. I said we've been auditing, we've been out of power. No, How could we no, audit? No, 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 you just said that. You said that a month ago. <coughs> you used the word. Because I, the, the word did not come out. Of, 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 about fact, we had a discussion. I wouldn't say systematic that. system because said, that, that's you said, stupid. You said yeah. you, were working, you were working to audit 460 million. And hence I had to tell, I had to say to my, my editorial department, I said, you guys should have been auditing what's mm. the money in the billions right now. <coughs> no, no, no. What I said is that so far, the only audit that is being done is an audit up to 2017, yes. which includes the 460 million pre-contract okay. cost. Okay. But that is the audit being done that I just spoke of, and I gave you a ball-by-ball -ball blow 
of where it is, who was hired, when they were hired by the coalition, when the reports came in, the issues we had with the report. And, and I lamented the fact that uh, we still have another uh, maybe uh, six point something billion dollars to be audited that we have to get to of expenditure that's already made. Fine, fine, um, fine. So one second, one second, please. Fine. But my question to you, why are we worrying about money in the hundreds of millions, 400 a day, and not worrying about the billions to, to which, to which, to which a limited time frame is set, is set out there? No, the limited time frame is set out for all of the money, not only pre-contract costs. Yes. And that is why we're saying you have to build a, a, a capability to audit within that time frame. And you can do it. You can, you can do it, and that is what we're doing now. We're starting to build that capability so we don't find ourselves when the additional billions are spent for the PIR development and completion of LEADSA 2 that we don't find ourselves in a similar situation. So could I, so, 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 so this nation could hear you saying that we begin to audit all those billions tomorrow morning? Before the time expires. No, no, and yes, a way that we're time has expired basically in some ways for for quite a bit of the expense, but we're building the capability to do audits to not in real time, not in real time, but with the shortest possible lag after the expenditure. So I can't tell you tomorrow because I hope tonight, if you want to talk about all that we're doing, we're working at multiple fronts. On, on rebuilding or putting in place an architecture for the proper management of the industry. So there are quite a few things going on simultaneously. And we also have to deal with other sectors of the economy. But we have an aggressive reform agenda for the entire sector. I admire that and I applaud you guys for that. Put a proper system to manage the system. Mm -hmm. We'll manage the oil sector. But I'm talking about billions of dollars that have already been spent, to which we had no say in it. That isn't that a, a, a priority as in tomorrow morning or that's to, beginning tonight? No, but I agree. But if you, the country, agreed that they will spend, okay, for, or the Exxon said they got a license on the app now for Lisa One. They receive a license yeah. for the production. So they said they will spend four point something billion dollars to develop Litsa One. Then they, they, after the spending is done, what controls government has? Because they're not doing the effective spending. Exxon is the operator. So the expenditure is made, and then the government way of seeing that they don't cook the book and inflate expenditure or buy from related parties at inflated price is to do the audit to check for all of those things. That is where the government fell down. By, that is how you protect the national interest to see that the expenditure is real and that it's the least cost way of development developing the oil fields, developing what, the oil what, fields. What, Gentlemen, what, what, I think that what, we Mr. spent a lot second, of time. Yeah. One second, Mr. President. You, you said auditing this, this, this four point something billion. We are, we, Not we, four point something billion, yes. That break down to 3.5. Let, let's, let's go with Lisa, with Lisa one. And uh, coalition would have would have would have made would have made those those type of mistakes, and we are where we are today. We are saddled with with these bills to which we didn't have had any say, and we have to pay. But there is there is even a deeper issue within that that contract that speaks of we have to notify Exxon or all your companies. We have got to notify them, giving them advance notice to go and check their books. We have to, we, Exxon is doing business, and we would have reported this many times. Exxon is doing business with countries that do not divulge information. 
meaning if you if you and your government wants to know how much Exxon has paid for these pipes or these this rig, we can't know. Well, that what, is. What are we doing as a as but, a nation? But the thing is that you're switching to other issues now, and I'm happy to answer those. Yeah. But so the first thing is the notice. Now. I have issues with long-term notice because we are a sovereign country and companies that operate here must, be, must comply with our laws. And if our system says that we are doing an audit, you have to comply with the audit. That is the law of Guyana. But it's only reasonable that companies be notified to. You have a business. And if GRA, you would expect GRA to say to you, um, we are going to, to audit you. Right. So we expect you to prepare your books, to comply with it. We are coming in in a certain time. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything egregious about it, although I do have problems with making it seem as though Exxon has sovereignty within a sovereign nation. I do have problems with that kind of uh, configuration. And some parts, wording of the contract, confers or creates that impression that they have sovereignty over, over the country. So that's one. If I tell, if I the, tell. This, so that's the first issue you raise about, about notice, etc. What was the second issue? Um, the documents being kept overseas. Oh, well, yes, but this is where you have, if we request a document in the audit and they can't make the document available, and we see that the industry standard is because you don't have to get it directly from Exxon. If a pipeline costs $20 in Trinidad, 20 feet pipeline, and we see that Exxon bought from a related company the same pipeline for $40, then the audit will say, identify that, and say that only $20 will be acceptable and allowable under uh, the cost oil, to be recovered under cost oil. So that's where you'll have a dispute. And that is why it's so crucial to build a, a capability for audit with people who know what industry practices are. It's not, and that is why I had issues with GRA at the beginning doing audit, because we don't have that capability. They're very capable there of doing audits on regular companies, but not oil companies. And so we have to build that capability. That is precisely what we're talking about. Yeah, you, you talk about, you talk about um, auditing a pipeline. But if no, we, I just gave that yeah, as an I example. I an example. And, and hear right. me. Don't, just, just hear yes. me. Just hear me. Um, you're saying that it has to be in the industry norm as to the pricing. But the way we, the way we, we are running our sector, right? We have no say in anything they do. And when time is expired. Then we, we just but, have to but that's a generalized right. statement, so I can't deal with that. I can deal with specific issues. Mm -hmm. So if you raise a specific issue, I can deal with it. I can't deal with the generalized statements yeah, I understand, because they're very subjective. I understand because we were just talking stage stage after stage by audit. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with audit, and you talk about the cost of audit. yeah. But I'm telling that's you right. that that's is right. how governments exercise control over cost, and it's post. It's not pre. So you can, you, it's, it's post-expenditure, the control of, of cost. Yes, Ken. Mr. Jack, you, I'd like to move on to another topic. Also in relation to the local content um, matter, the president would have received a report from the local content panel that he had appointed, yes. but that document is yet to be released. When can the, the public expect to see this doc document? I'll take your comments and then we'll give the floor over to Mr. Law. Okay, so um, we're very grateful to the people who participated in that panel. They did an excellent job. 
So we had a, a, a discussion with them, and we said that the lengthy report, it's a huge report, and we can release the report at any, any time. So it's a big report. So we said, why don't you get it down to about 30 pages? And to call the recommendations, which overlap based on sectors, so the banking sector made proposals, the manufacturing sector, agricultural, all of the sectors spoke about local content, and they made presentations. So we're hoping that they can amalgamate all of the common comments into one document and then use that document once uh, for broader consultation. So once that document is done, we can release both the original document plus the, the summarized document to the public and then hold, um, hold the president himself would have a consultation with the public, have a, 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 the convention center and different places, get the public views on both documents, and then use the, the, that to prepare the negotiating brief to announce a policy and to prepare a negotiating brief, which will then go to the lawyers to prepare legislation to be tabled in the National Assembly. So that is how we intend to approach the matter. So if there is okay, Anna, there is no problem with releasing it, but there would be all done when the president holds the consultation. So both the original document and the summarized document, and then the, the consultations would take place. But all with the aim, we were hoping to have draft legislation before the end of the year. But, but unfortunately, unfortunately, we have not been able to do that. Thank you for that um, explanation. Kiana, local content. This, I want the, this, this entire nation, I want everybody to know. And uh, Mr. President also know that this oil industry, it is not large. It is not huge. This is a gigantic field we are in. And local content, to speak on local content, I think I can speak a whole 10 years on that alone. So I pass on this for tonight, uh, Kian. Well, well, the thing is that although it's, we don't have the luxury of passing on it, because the government has a duty to protect its, uh, the country so, and the citizens. My friend, that should have been in place from the well, time well, to well, here. Well, we all could always look retrospectively at the issue, but again, we were very critical in opposition. Unfortunately, you didn't hear us, yes, but you heard you know, opposition speaking about local content and in very specific terms, and we placed that as a key issue in our manifesto to say that it's if we can't, Guyanese can't benefit from this industry, we might as well shut it down. Mm -hmm. That is what we said. And so it is our duty to ensure that our people benefit significantly from the industry. And they will not benefit from a, a, a policy similar to what APNU had. And you can't wait for voluntary compliance from the oil, oil industry. They will not comply, and a lot of their subcontractors who come into, who are here now, will cream all of the business. So that is why we embarked upon this route, that there have to be a policy that sees local content in almost every area for Guyanese, a special carve out, and that they have to spend more here on creating businesses, a whole range of, of, of um, and, and, and we're going to monitor that closely. I so, so this is crucial for us. And, and uh, we've been even critical about the wages they pay to Guyanese versus the foreigners. And so all of that we're hoping with this widespread, pan this large panel that we have of some of the smartest people. And then Guyanese can come to the consultations and share their views as to what should be in part of the policy. Once that is in place, we hope to improve the situation significantly. 
but we are putting a lot of pressure on the companies themselves to make sure that the spending pattern changes. And I think they recognize what is coming because they themselves are talking the local content language. Sir, we had, we had, we should have already ha had in place a decent, a proper local content policy. I, I, I recall carrying many pages in the newspaper on a daily basis when Guyana hired Anthony Paul, a Trinidadian, <clears throat> to come and put together that local content policy. And I, it, it pains me to know that the coalition government sent that man away and hired an, 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 a British to come here to overlook and to redo that man's draft that he left to the dead. And everything that Trini had in place there, it, it, it was very clear that it safeguarded, it would have safeguarded Diana. Instead, instead, the politicians went and hired one guy who's a, who's, a, who's a friend of the oil companies to change every single thing that Anthony Paul did for us. My, my well, that is something that you should address to the coalition when they come here, because they, they seem to be getting a free pass on most of these issues. But we, we recognize it as a deficiency, and, and that is why Anthony Paul and Floyd Haynes and Carl Greenwich and, and Sham Nocta and the Kevin Ramnarine, and, who is a former minister, they were all part of this panel to work on the local content um, draft for us. That is the consultation document that I spoke of because we want people who look out for our interests, regional and national interests, that they are the ones who are guiding the work. Later, we may still have to get consultants, but not to truncate the work, not to truncate the work, but to, to enhance it. And so you should address that to the coalition. I don't like this, um, the balancing act, as though we are equally to be blamed on these issues. That seems to be your um, your mantra it's, now, and I just know, heard a little tune of Calypso uh, um, that you I, 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 I you prepare. I right. Okay. And All that's right. How, that's how I feel as a citizen of this land. Well, you're right um, to feel that way, but know, please direct your your anger or your comments not, to the uh, to the appropriate it's destination. Not, it's not an anger. It's more of of upset to know that you guys. You guys should have been working together. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. as, 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 as a people. When you, when you fight against one another, the nation is suffering, bro. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Absolutely. I agree that we have to work together um, on several things. That's why we said um, in our manifesto that we want to approach the oil and gas sector in a nonpartisan way. That is why we said in our manifesto, we want a technical body to manage the industry and we're working towards a petroleum commission. So we, we believe in that approach, but right now we can't embark on this, any, any engagement with the opposition because they still don't recognize the government. They think it's illegitimate. You know, you know, Mr. President, I call you Mr. President, no disrespect to the President of the Republic of Guyana, Mr. Efana. You have been the President, and I believe that you're still the man in command and in control. No, the, no, 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 don't no. let's go down that let me, route, let yes. Me, let me, let don't me let's go down that you. route. I thought we're dealing with oil and gas right. tonight. Right. Yeah, right. Yes. I, mm -hmm. I, I am very tired as the publisher of this newspaper. Every day, Whenever, when, when we sit to discuss um, news as to what we are giving Guyana the next day, this blame game that keeps knocking at us every single moment, every single day in our lives. And I'll give you an example. Tomorrow we are carrying a story. Tomorrow we are carrying a story in which one of the reporters um, said that um, Mr. Patterson, is saying that the, the government should have should have already revoked the fifty million US dollar bond on the on the airport. 
and that sends a signal to my, to my head that sometimes I want to explode. Here we are talking every day for the last 13, what, 7, 8 years on an airport. Now we're, we're, today, we're going off to the airport. Well, Patterson should be the last person to talk about this because Patterson's criminal behavior has caused much of the transgressions there. I want to you, let, me, let me just say this because I know what we were supposed to get from that airport. We have the drawings, we have the building, what's a modern building, to pull down the entire airport and put up a large building, about 17,000 square, square meters, with a, with a new runway, with an apron to house eight standing aircrafts at least. What will happen there is a travesty. When we came in, they were on the verge of accepting the defective works. Had Patterson been there, they would have accepted it. The people would have just moved away and we wouldn't have gotten anything. We made it clear that we're not accepting it. That is why they decided to come and fix some of the issues. Now the bond issue, etc. had we gone to arbitration with the company, they would have just shown the approvals that they got from Patterson to cut the, to cut the, 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 the square footage of the airport. They approved every change for the Chinese company. And, and, and so Patterson should be the last person to talk about it. This guy, eh, eh, anyhow, he, he was the cause that Guyana probably lost over 30 million U.S. dollars worth of value from that airport. He shouldn't you, even surface. But I, anyhow, I, can we come back? No, we, I, I want you, to, sorry. I want to, I want to, I want to touch right. I want to add to that. You are blaming Patterson. But we've gone off into this, but right. I can deal with this. Can I, I can come back a whole day and talk about all of APNU's transgressions if you want to, no. or the PPP, no, 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 and defend that. No. But I, I wanted to ask you a few I questions, not, too. I am not Since Kiana, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Mr. You're the supposed to be the guest. We sir. have two persons sir. here sir. from your sir. staff who are interviewing us. Sir, please, please. I, I, I brought that up. I brought it up for a reason about the blame game. What you're blaming and this one blame. But this is but not. Let me, let me be very frank. What do you want us to no, do? No, no, well, me, well, we shouldn't blame you know, Abnu for. You know the nation, this nation, this nation, your party have not have not sent out a statement, sent out that design to Guyana for us to see. We have to dig down and dig down and dig down in, in, into it. On to now, on to now, we, the, the nation is in dark as to what, what is the airport really look like. I shared with your reporters at a press conference the copy of the contract, the original contract, a copy of what the airport should have looked like. It's a glass building with steel, modern looking building, etc. I share that with your staff what it should look like. You know what it looks like now. It, it now looks like uh, uh, a, well, re a renovated. Re renovated a renovated. Be e e exactly. Exactly. And that is the same anger. That's the same anger that I have every time I go there because I know what we paid for and what we are getting now. Oh. The same thing. And Patterson is the sole reason why we get that. But let me, yes, so, so um, I think we, we, yes, um, we can move on um, because That's we've just know. lost one interviewer. Kiana has just stepped out because she's not feeling well, right. so I'll continue. Yeah. Um, let's bring us back to the oil and gas conversation. All right. Vice President, I would like okay. to take your attention to taxes. Okay. There appears to be a disparity in the way we go after tax assessments. Mm. We see that the oil sector has granted billions of dollars in tax exemptions and we are slow to conduct audits for compliance in this regard. Mm -hmm. Yet, we go after the small man. Mm -hmm. Is this of any concern to the administration and do you intend to do anything about it? And I'll ask Mr. Lal to input that. Sure, okay. So, the, you're absolutely right about the concessions, but all of those are enshrined in the PSA. 
and so it's almost oh, tax where and and it's even so egregious that where tax liabilities fall on the company you know often the government has to pay those taxes in in many cases so a lot of the laxity or, or you see in relation to the oil companies is derives from the PSA. The fiscal regime of the PSA is too liberal and it puts us at a disadvantage. So that is why we said, when the IMF came and said, well, you can't change it now, but in the future. But we also made it clear that in that this PSA relates only to the Stabrook block, that any oil company, whether it's Exxon, Hess, GS, JHI, Mid-Atlantic, whatever the company is, that when they come to the production stage and they have to sign a, a PSA, a production sharing agreement, they will face an entirely different fiscal regime at that time, which will correct the deficiencies in this, this um, the current uh, PSA and uh, put in additional features that will safeguard the country, like we spoke of several times, including ring fencing and other issues that are of concern there. So that is it. That, that is how it has been. And we have gone even further to show that some subcontractors that Exxon would hire have been benefiting from concessions that local people don't get, although they're using the equipment they bring in or the facilities they build to compete with Guyanese companies uh, bidding for the same business. So Guyanese are placed at a competitive disadvantage. And this is precisely what has to be fixed as part of the local content policy. So it's not because of discrimination. I don't think the tax DRA is discriminating against in favor of these this big company. It is just that they are bound by the PSA, and it's the PSA in future that has to change that will give them the, the, the authority to pursue the taxation more aggressively. Thank you. You know, like local content, the tax giveaway by our leaders in this land is not a deficiency. This is highway robbery. And I can speak of a whole year on that. When, 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 and you can, this just happened a few days ago. Mr. Ashi Singh went to customs, GRA, doing a, a, a walk around. And when he could have said that, um, well, um, and we were threatening the, the, oil, the oil revenues, I smiled. Because I, I really wanted to know if, if this, this is my leader, this is my finance minister. You threatening what? There's nothing for you to get. And on the other hand, he's on the opposite as to the local. Locals, he, he actually said, oh, well, we have to get our, our locals to pay. We're going after them for taxes. And I am like, no, I don't, I, I, don't I think you're mischaracterizing no, 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 what finish. Ashni Singh said. Let me yeah. finish. I, I can even get the newspaper and read it. Yeah. And if his exact words, he was quoted. Yeah, but. And, and the pandemic has taken this world. And I'll tell you this, and I'll tell Guyana tonight, as you raise the subject matter, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, GRA has been behind us for the last few months. Like, like hawks. Like hawks. I'm like, guys. And I'm sure you I, have nothing to hide. We have nothing to hide. Exactly. To hide. So you don't have to worry. Hello. I don't think any business made money in this country. And, yeah. and they're on your back. We're going to take you to court. I'm like, you guys, you guys for, you guys for real? Running after. If they, if they come after you, they can shut you down now. No, and, you, they wouldn't shut they, you down. No, that's not right, the point. Yeah. That's not the point. the point. The point that gets me angry and annoyed is that we are allowing this oil, we have signed on, giving away these oil, these oil companies, their affiliates, 
their subcontractors, their workers. Every single body get tax free ride. And these people are being paid. We don't even know yet. I don't even think the government understands what is being paid. I was just told a few days no, ago. No, but they, I was just told they're pay, days, are they paying income tax? They work, no, 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 no. Workers. Not the foreigners. Not the foreigners. Not the foreigners. Mm -hmm. But our brothers and sisters working out there, Mr. Vice President, they, has they, to pay their, their full taxes. They, is this fair to, to, to this country, though? They have to pay their um, income tax. But let me just deal with this. Yes. We ju I just spoke about this issue. I told you that the tax regime they got is too liberal. The tax regime is too liberal. They got more than they should have gotten. And this has been established by almost every group that has studied this matter. You have written extensively about it. You have looked at the study done by the Burling Base Group as to Exxon Shear, that they, which is outside of industry norm. Even Reistad NRG and like Wood Mackenzie, they have shown that we are on, on terms of royalty take and the government's take in NPV terms that these are only in the mid-range. And I think those two groups are more sympathetic to Exxon. And even they showed that we're only in the global mid-range of taxation regimes. And, and the Berlin group showed that we're, we're at the low end of the spectrum. So that has to shift upwards. Now, Exxon has said that this is the frontier country. And that is why it's frontier incentives. But um, so, so you've had comparisons. The Berlin Group compared them with some frontier countries and said, we're still low compared to the frontier countries. When, when Reistad showed like Israel and, and Falklands and said that, and Mauritania, and they said, oh, we're, we're in the range of frontier countries. So you have a ton of disagreements there, even with the consultancy firms and Exxon's reasoning why it's getting the incentives. I know from a country's perspective that we have to get more, and that's where we're aiming for in the standard PSAs to come. And, and so even government said they had to give this, uh, Trotman, you remember Trotman's infamous statement that he had to give all of these concessions because they protect us on the border. It's a sovereignty issue, and that is why they had to be so, so liberal. So, so we recognize all of this. We recognize this has to be done. My company, Kaicho News, myself, we, take, we don't even take Reister and all of the, these companies that, that speak about Guyana and Guyana's oil. We take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah, but you because, only yes, you take you take the ones that have a different view than you with not, a pinch of salt. But you are liberal with the others that have your view. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're no, you're, no, you're no, smiling. No, it is true. Finish, you, you don't balance I, at I, all. I, I smile and I laugh many times mm -hmm. when 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 I when I read their reports what they put out. They you believe you believe that they are the paymasters yes. at Exxon. Is the pay masters of them, yes. and you don't have to go to school to understand yeah. that. Everything, everything, they they would say Guyana. But what? A, what? Wait, wait, what wait, 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 if you wait. ask me our position, I don't know what you're trying to get at because you're making the case that the fiscal regime is too liberal, and I just acknowledge that, and I said we we have to change this, and you just spoke about taxation I, in Guyana, and I can point out to you that under the PPP, that since we came into office, we have reduced taxation enormously. In the first budget, we removed the taxes that they had put on machinery and equipment. We reduced taxes on inputs into several sectors. We, we return like lots of benefits to people that they, I don't want to give you a list, about 20-something yes. items that ended up in, with producing more disposable income in the pockets of Guyana. 
uh, um, Guyanese, billions of dollars of, in, um, of disposable income. And that is why you have seen, in spite of the pandemic, a pickup of the economy, in spite of the pandemic. And it is not an easy thing to do. We have managed to give up $40 billion of tax incentives to Guyanese, not to foreign companies, to Guyanese since we got into office, 40 billion Guyana dollars of tax incentives and still keeping the economy ticking. My friend, my friend. So I'm, proud, friend, of, I'm proud of the PPP's record friend, in this area. You, you're talking about 40 billion you're giving to Guyanese mm -hmm. um, in, in waiving these taxes. That's 200 million Guyana dollars. 200 mm -hmm. million US yeah. dollars. And in one, and this thing, we are accepting a bill, bills in the billions, no. or we are giving away taxes, All right. taxes in US but, dollars but listen, in the billions. <clears throat> let's get to some fundamental issues, Kima. Uh, no, I, I just want to ask you, because you've been writing a lot about the oil and gas yes, sector. Yes, yes, yes. So, do you think we should develop this industry? We should have investment? Um, oh, oh, huh? oh, that's a beautiful question you're asking you. Should, should we should just shut it down, right? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. I, I, any, any oil producing nations have to develop. All right, so but, that's one. But my question: How my much question, money? Yeah. How much money do you think mm -hmm. we have in our total assets of our banking system and our non-financial banking system? I would think you would want to tell us we are broke. No, 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 no. The total financial system I would not and the be, banking I system. I would not be able to. Well, let me that. let me give but you. It's, no, no, no. But let me tell you, mm -hmm. it's about one point one trillion dollars mm -hmm. total assets of the entire banking system, mm -hmm. which works out to about 5.6 billion U.S. dollars. 5.6 .6 billion U.S. dollars. This is the total assets of our banking system. Mm -hmm. How much do you think with total deposits? This is deposits from government, the commercial banks, and the non-financial institution. Total deposits in Guyana. Mm -hmm. It's 2.6 billion. 2.6 billion. Mm -hmm. With Lisa alone, to develop Lisa alone, costs nearly $4 billion. That's, if we take all of the deposits by every single Guyanese in the banking system, by our, in a non-financial banking system, as well as the commercial banks, and the government deposits in the banking system and put all of them together, we can't even finance Lisa 1. So that's 2.6 billion and that one costs upwards of 3 billion. Yeah. If we look at the Payara development, the three developments, close to 20 billion, that is about eight times more than all of the money we have in Guyana in all of our banks just to develop these three facilities. So where the scale of it to develop an offshore facility or any oil and gas industry far outweighs the capability of the country. I just gave you an idea of total deposits, all the money we have in Guyana, we put in the bank. We need eight times more to finance Lisa 1, Lisa 2, and Payara. So where are you going to get that money if you're doing it? Wait. So, I, I, so what, listen, what listen, don't listen, you expect listen, listen. I understand, I understand. the scale of this? I understand. So, right. I understand. And the people are not coming here spoke, for peanuts. When you spoke about mm. development, right. I misunderstood you. I thought you were talking about developing this country. I, wasn't, I didn't understand you were talking about developing the oil sector out there. I know that these oil no. Exxon, uh, listen, listen to me carefully, Exxon, they came here and their investments, they are seeking the investments to come there. What do you mean they're seeking the investments? The money, the, man, the money to develop these projects, Exxon is bringing that. Guyana doesn't have, to, doesn't have anything to do with that. 
That's you, you, yes, but, you, but, but that's a, a, a rudimentary understanding. It's a rudimentary understanding because uh, it, it is, uh, everybody knows that they're bringing in the money. But my point is so that you, the scale, mm -hmm. you, often in economic terms, you have to look at transformation of a country and the scale of investable capital needed. So I'm just pointing out the scale. Here, just for the oil and gas industry, just three projects done by Exxon alone, leaving out all of the others. It is eight times more than all the deposits we have in all of our banks. But so I if we want to, if you want those resources to be developed, you have to first incentivize, but protect the country. I disagree with you. Uh, incentivize. Well, well, this is. And, and this I disagree with you because yes, listen to me. Yes, these, but these are these are people. These are these are, these are your companies yes. who coming here. Mm -hmm. They are sourcing the funds. Yes, but it's. They uh, are sourcing but, the funds. But you have a fundamental. Let me this. Let me let me I understand, but Glenn. The issue is, it's so not about you, what, source what, of funds. No, it has nothing to do with source yeah. of funds. It has to do, I'm trying to, to convey to you a simple economic issue, which is the scale of investments needed to develop the oil and gas industry. And I'm saying, and it, I'm saying it, no, I'm saying it's way beyond capability of our total banking sector. So they have to source the money. Mm -hmm. they, that's, uh, that's normal. Basic. They have the basic yeah. and they will invest and we get a share of the profit. Mm -hmm. Our aim has to be that so that they can source the money at the cheapest possible rate. Mm -hmm. To which we have the, no, no, at the cheapest possible rate. That is our aim, mm -hmm. and that should be the policy aim of the government. Secondly, to minimize expenditure in the development of the mm -hmm. field, and then maximize our share of the profits. And this is where, that's the, the guiding philosophy that's driving us. And so, there has been deficiencies, but that's the guiding philosophy in the future. And then to ensure that the, the $20 billion they spend offshore, that that's mirrored by another $40 billion of investment onshore to supply the industry there. That is what we have to pressure these companies to service the industry from Guyana. Not from Trinidad and Tobago, not out of the US, but they're from Guyana. When that happens, then our locals start benefiting because the money is spent here, the investment is here. And you see already spin-off benefits, and this is where we have to push it. Would you please allow Already, me? no, but already we couldn't get a single hotel going. Look at the Marriott. We had to co-invest in the Marriott, and I don't own the Marriott since we're on the program together. Oh, yeah. I don't own the Marriott, so because you had that for about four years in your papers, mm -hmm. um, that I own the Marriott. But I allow me to speak to no, 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 I allow you, but we already have now 29 proposals, and I think seven of those, seven, eight, are serious ones that will end up in seven, eight new hotels. All of these are associated development. So you have to chaperone all of this True. It is, that is why I'm asking you. Sometimes I feel that you believe that we should just shut down everything, chase away everybody, and just sit on the resources for the next 100 years. Uh, right. So that's what I feel with your newspapers, please, yeah. Please, and I don't, I don't get clarity from you. Please, yeah, you go, please go ahead. Me to speak mm -hmm. I, am, I am totally in disagreement with what, what you're saying here. And yeah. one, Let, okay. one All right. let, me, let me be very clear. Sure. Um, the ring around and go around, you went around. I understand business very simple. A man come to do business with us, he's financing, he's financing that project. That has nothing to do with Glen Lal or my business. However, I have to make sure, I have to make sure one, that the money he's sourcing, I'm in agreement with the, with the interest rates. Two, I have to agree as to the money he's borrowing. Three, he has to tell me what 
and how he planned to, to spend this money on this project. That has nothing to do with Glenda. Hold on, the spin offs ain't coming yet. I gotta make sure what the money he's getting there, he's putting there, and the interest I'm, I'm paying, that I am well compensated, brother. That's all I'm saying. You talk about, you talk about service centers, how the spin offs can get here. My question to you, I have been looking around and we have been reporting on service, service centers. Who? Which service centers? They, they've got the, take um, Slumma J for one. Slumma J for one. And they, they are already other um, servicing centers setting up to supply them. Who is benefiting there? Not the Guyanese people? You know well, what well, well, let me people? tell you, since yeah. we got into office, I personally intervened to clear four sets of working permits that the people were waiting for for over two and a half years. For two and a half years, they met every requirement, all Guyanese companies, over 55 million US dollars. That they're investing? Investing. Well, Guyanese. I am, I am proud and I'm happy, right. to, I'm happy to hear. Right, and they're because, investing. Because if they're but, but they wouldn't be able to invest two billion US dollars because all the money in our whole banking system is 2.6 billion. The Guyanese, if we take all the money and pull out all the money from every bank. Don't do that no, 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 but, but they can invest the 55 million, but they, can, they can't invest. Don't do that. Yes, okay. I'm local content, local content, you have to allow us, allow the people of this country to get a fair share but, but, of that. But Glenn, it, it's say. commonsensical. Mm -hmm. If you need $40 billion of investment mm -hmm. to service the oil and gas industry, mm -hmm. and you only have in all the banks in this country, and all the money that we have, Guyanese, that we deposited there, only $2.6 billion, then you have to expect that the rest of the money, 37.4 billion, will have to come from other sources, external sources. Sorry. So Sorry. there is a room for that. But then when they come here, we have to ensure that the slumberjays pay their taxes. That is how you get more money into the treasury, that they hire Guyanese, that they include Guyanese in joint ventures, etc. That is the reality. You know, you could talk about running it down to a business, but the oil and gas sector is very nuanced and it's capital intensive. It's very capital intensive. I think, I think we're getting, we're, we're a bit shifty, shifty. No, you're shifty. Uh, no, I'm not I'm, <laughs> yeah. You know, you talk about Guyana, Guyana um, the Guyanese have to find 55 billion. You, you have to, you, unless you give the people the opportunity and say, hey guys, get going there, get going there. We don't have to depend on your banking system, sir. They have international, wait, wait, let me finish. Yeah. They have international lenders out there that is willing for them to open your mouth. But you know what? You gotta have, you gotta have a commitment. And this is what, this is what we need to, we need to get, we need to have that commitment from the government and also from the oil players. And why, why I'm saying this is because the same land that, that, the same land that is in dispute with the, the PNC um, lawyer, well, what's his name? James Bond. James Bond. That same land that, you know the story, you don't have to re repeat that story, that, that, those players there, listen to me carefully, those, and I didn't even write that story yet, those same players already have a contract in their hand. So how Guyanese can benefit, brother? All right, but, but you're, you see, what I was trying to convey to you, go slow, and go slow. is, I'm too bright to no, 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 is just, I'm not saying we don't have access to money. I wish if we can leverage the 2.6 billion of in our banking can. system, Guyanese can leverage that and borrow all 40 billion and own everything. But the reality of life is that we would not be able to because you have a rapid growth in the industry and it is in our interest. Often you say depletion policy, but you know, we have not defined a depletion policy, but we have. And all these things are frightening? No, 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 but it's not frightening because we have 
anecdotally, I said that we should try to extract as much oil and gas as possible in the shortest period because of the, the impending changes globally. I now we don't, no, 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 well you disagree and I know that's why I'm bringing it up right. because I, you write about I it all the time in the paper it. and that's why I'm telling you I why and I'm telling you why. But going back to the other, other point before I come to the depletion policy is that we cannot, so the idea is to create a framework in which our people benefit. And we cannot invest all of these resources. We cannot raise the money because you can't, nobody in the right sense, if you go to a bank and you say, I want to borrow 10 billion Guyana dollars, but I only have uh, uh, 50, uh, 50 dollars, nobody in the right sense will give you. But you need 10 billion now to service the industry or else the, the investments go to Trinidad and the others. That's why we have to encourage all of it to come here. So that's one point. I'm not using this 2.6 as a limiting billion dollars as a limiting factor. I'm trying to, to use it so you understand scales of expenditure needed in the country. Often we talk about the sector without understanding the scale of investment resources needed. That's the first point. On depletion policy, you've written extensively about it. My own view is that we have, we have a period in which oil would be, still be very relevant in the global mix of energy. I agree with that. We have a period, but it is a window that is closing because of climate change. I don't agree with that. Uh, yes, it is a window that is closing because of climate change. We will probably, the window for Guyana will remain open a little bit longer than the other parts of the world for two reasons. We are, we have a low break-even cost, and two, we are crude is a sweet, it's light sweet crude, unlike other places that have heavy sour crude. So the IMO um, has, has now said that by this year, 80% of the sulfur content has to be removed from global shipping. Everybody wants to, and, and heavy sour oil has a lot of sulfur. So they have to remove, um, everybody is looking now for sweet crude, and we are in the market for that. So because of climate change, because of these global regulations, because with the Biden administration coming in now, he's made it clear, I'm moving to renewable energy. And once you have a country like the United States doing that, China has already moved substantially into wind, solar, a whole range of renewable energy. They're looking at alternative fuel sources. They, some countries have banned the combustion engine from, say, 20, in a, 10 years' time. So the demand for, for, for oil and gas, um, the oil, will either be static or declining in, say, the 15, 20 years' time. But it will, it will change because the climate change is a real issue. So why, why do we have, we have this window to now get as much out of this, this sector as possible, maximize production, get the revenue out of this sector, invest it well to build up the capability of this country, one, to use it in infrastructure, a world-class infrastructure, two, world-class education and health for our people, three, that we save some for intergenerational equity. Mr. Vice President. But please. these are Mr. complex Vice issues, I know you're no, not, no, no, right, no, 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 yeah. no, no, I understand very clearly yeah, yes. every single thing, but I So, I so well, then you'll have your chance. So yes. that is why I believe that we have, I, that is the depletion policy I for you. I understand clearly where That's you're a depletion from, policy. And yeah. it is sad, because everything you said there, you're not, you, you're telling you, us that... All right, you take it. You're telling you, wait, 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 wait. technically, you wait, make the case wait, against wait, it. Wait, wait, technically. Yes, yeah. allow me, allow me, allow me, please. The way how you, how you, how you express yourself there, mm -hmm. 
I am, I am hearing from you that you don't care about the, the depletion policy in place, which is very dangerous for us. Two, what do you understand by a depletion policy? You have to set the stage. So we, we should be in control of that. No, no, no. What do you understand by a depletion policy? Bringing up our oil. Mm -hmm. How fast, how slow, mm -hmm. we bring it up. Yes, so I said bring it up as fast as possible. You said bring it up, and I don't agree with yes, that. Yes, but tell me because what. Because I'm saying. Slow down, yes. Right, mm -hmm. right. Just listen to me carefully. I'm saying very simple, okay? We already have a bad deal, bro. We got one of the worst contract on earth. There's none. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you can, if you can prove to prove to the nation that we have something resemble, uh, but that is yeah, again. Let me move, let me move man. But please. when you just made a, a statement there, mm -hmm. and uh, I just pointed out to you that several groups, the Berlin Group, Reistad, you have big disagreement that it's the worst in the world. I agree that I agree that it's not the contract that needs changing, but it's not the worst in the world. That's one. But I'm using. That's one. Two. You said, answer me something. If you got something that will become either useless or the cost will go down in ten years from now, you got you you got to. Bring it, use it now. Yes. So Fully is not norm, normal? Yeah, but this is where this is where I disagree. Mm, yeah, yeah. And you gotta hear me. You gotta now hear is that me simplified me. version yeah, yeah, of the thing? Me. Right. You gotta okay. hear me. You gotta hear me. We're not dealing. We're not dealing with mangoes that will spoil on a tree. We're not dealing with fruits or vegetables. We're dealing with bauxite, gold, and diamond and oil. These things go. Wait, wait. Let me finish. <laughs> These things don't spoil, my brother. You understand? <laughs> And, and if something is going to spoil or will go out in tomorrow morning, yes, you want to get rid of it. But if it's not going to spoil, you got to make sure you get your fear share, brother. All right, but, but the thing is that that's static thinking. And so so at a time at a time in the world, we were number one with bauxite. There was a time in the 40s when the war was raging, they needed Guyana bauxite. Then we fell in significance in the world. Now we practically don't matter. Guinea overtook us, Australia, Brazil, etc. And because they have cheaper cost alternatives, and what happened is that the plastics were developed. And a lot of the things that we were used to make with aluminum, they started making with plastics. So the importance of the bauxite to the world change. So when people are saying, oh, it's white gold here, now we can't find anybody to come and dig, dig it out because the costs are too high and with the overburden. So similarly, you may be able to, to use the oil in the future, but with a carbon tax or a cap and trade system, which is coming, it's inevitable because of the existential threat of greenhouse gases. It's inevitable. Then taking the gas or the oil, a barrel of oil out in 10 years time, me, that barrel of oil to sell it will have a tax of about $30 per ton for every ton of carbon emitted from the barrel. So if the barrel gives you 10 tons of dollars, you have to pay $300 more in taxation on that, and that would be a global tax. So the alternative will be cheaper, and that is why people will keep the oil in the ground. It would be impossible to take it out. And I'm just shortening the time frame. You understand what I'm doing? I'm not, I'm, I'm just giving you an example here. Uh, uh, so to explain the, the taxation system or cap and trade. So you have to look at it. Look, even our forest carbon, was with the Norway agreement was $5 per ton. And APNU made a mess of it. And now we are back, we are gonna start the discussions with Norway now. Norway's on the right, on the writing uh, globally, it's at $10 per ton of avoided deforestation from forest carbon. You can, our earnings, and if we go into the market that will start trading forest carbon, we could earn 
upwards of 500 million U.S. dollars, uh, uh, you know, from the sector. 500 million U.S. dollars from just trading forest carbon. And this is all because of a resurgence of green, the green economy on, and with Biden there. And with his, he laid out what, he's, what we will do. It will get a big boost in the arm. I want to go back. I want to go so back. that is why I'm telling you this. I, that is why the depletion policy is tailored towards that. I hear you. I hear you. But just that I don't agree with you, my friend. But you don't, you don't have a reason behind your disagreement. It's an emotional one. A lot of your things are very emotional, not, uh, not um. Hear me clearly, and I'm going to use your word back. Similarly, you use that word with the bauxite industry. Would you care to share the information with this nation as to what Guyana received? I listen you say they're yeah, sure. going out and they're going to disappear. We, the, the world wouldn't need it. Mm -hmm. They're still they're still huffing out our bauxite for donkey years now. Since even before you did. Yeah, sure. What has Guyana got to? Well, that's my point. Yeah. Yeah. I give you a chance to speak. Please, give me back a chance. If we... It's the same, the same thing I'm asking. Are we going to continue allowing these people to rape this nation? All right, but Glenn, let's, let's, let's change this whole thing. Right. So let me make it clear very pragmatically. If we get a person to go into the Kwakwani Aichuni area and start developing the bauxite industry, we'll give them all the concessions in exchange for the jobs for the people there. Because we need a thousand people employed there. So they will have a thousand families can feed, feed themselves and uh, feed themselves and, and, uh, and, and live. Let me tell you. So, no, 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 no. I'm telling you why. And I'm, that's why I'm saying I am telling you frankly speaking. Mm -hmm. So let us, let's put this differently now. Yeah. So why, if this was such a great project, mm -hmm. why don't we put together a consortium of Guyanese business? You only need about 40, 50 million dollars. Mm -hmm. And we will give them all the concessions in the world and even more than the foreign companies. We'd help them. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, let Glenn Lal take a group of Guyanese, put, since it's such a great project and you, you, you can pay taxes and still make money, we will, you pull together a consortium of Guyanese. We will help you. We will help. Not just we'll give all the tax waivers to you and this group, every single tax waiver. We will actually help you to, to carry community costs and fix some roads there if you only employ the 1,000 people. I, and you can make all the money I in the hear world. You, I hear you. you can make all the money in I the world. Hear. Whatever you make, we will not begrudge you I if you think you. it's such a great project. I so why don't you, you do that? I hear the 1,000 families need a job. You, Glenn Lal, you got a nice cushy uh, newspaper. Mm -hmm. You yeah. got make a lot of money, yeah. radio. Yeah. You yeah. make yeah. a exact, shoe business, a, a shoe business mm -hmm. everything. You, those 1,000 families need to fee eat and feed. So it's not because my government brother, is giving away. We give it I to you, you if you brother, want to develop brother, the same thing you. or any Guyanese. I hear you, but you have to understand that's not what I'm asking you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm yes, saying. that's precisely what you're no, saying. No, no, and I'm I want to give you the opportunity no, to no. develop the bauxite I resources. Am saying, I am saying if we are going to give it to a stranger, brother, we gotta get a reasonable share. Ah, I'm saying, right? uh, yes, but That's if I'm if they're saying, mm -hmm. if the stranger is saying, mm -hmm. I can go to Guinea, mm -hmm. and Guinea has a deep water harbor mm -hmm. where I don't have to dredge, mm -hmm. which pushes up the cost mm -hmm. additionally for shipping. The big ships can come there. You know, once the bigger the ships are, the lower the freight is. Mm -hmm. And it's a very competitive industry. Two, that Guinea has a railroad going into the interior. All I'm saying Three, no, 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 no. Three, that the overburden in Guinea is this thin. It, it's like the bauxite lie almost on the surface. Here in Guyana, you got to dig down 100 feet to get it. So it's a better grade bauxite, 
but it doesn't offset the cost. So, all right, go to Australia and do that. But, go. No, no, well, so go. then the people, and thousand people yes. must starve in Kwakwani and Ijuni. No, you, you're going to find a job for them? They're not going to starve. How are they going to? And listen, I get very, I feel Yes, very but how, you're going to employ them at Kaicho News? I feel very insulted yeah. when I pick up these newspapers and hear from our leaders when we, when we yeah. focus on jobs jobs and jobs well, you could feel jobs. is that what we really come to in this life? because you have a job and no, you have an income no, a person who doesn't have a job when can't feed their family or just lost a job, no, no, no. they think differently. They no, want a job. No, 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 you no, no, think, what should politicians do? Saying, what should politicians do if not to try to create jobs all, for people? All I'm saying, my friend, we have to create jobs. But at the same time, with our resources, listen to me carefully, brother. I beg you, yeah, listen to me carefully. Yes, but that is emotional, saying, man. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. All I'm saying is that if you have an asset, you must be adequately compensated for it. You've got to leave it alone. Yes. Listen, you know how many thousands of people not working? And guess what? They're living. God provides for the birds in the air, brother. Oh, really? Yeah. You and go to the starving them. families when they don't have food. Let God even drop food from brother, and give to them. I'm not, I don't mean to disparage religious people, but you think a hamper will drop from heaven? I know that. I know uh, that. You I think know. that? Anyhow, we have enough uh, you you we will have. feed them. You will feed them. I go on to communities where people don't have. Uh, they eat two meals a day or one meal a day. The children can't go to school because they don't have money to pay the passage. They don't write right, those people. And you know why? You know why they don't have? Why? Why they're like that? Because you, who's part of our leaders. You, the PFC, the PNC, and PUP, yeah, all, you guys made, no, no. all you guys would have made tremendous uh, bad, bad deals. No, no, no. Yes. Here, no. I don't want to go back into the economic history of this country right, so let's, let's move on. because I can point let out you, to you, you about the progress in the era of the PPP, economic progress in terms of jobs, revenue, um, expansion of the economy, expansion of trade, etc. I can point that out. I, can, I need two hours to that and to show you the economic history of this country. I wouldn't understand that. But okay. All I'm trying to be very simple. All right. So in a simple. Um, okay. You no, turn out to be the interviewer. Are you. No, no, I had. I, we I, had two I, interviewers here today from your newspapers, um, but but you took over the program. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've come to the end of the show tonight. Mm. No, but we can chat a little more. All okay. Right. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Yes. The program. Thank you very much. Yes, your your staff needs to go now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You finished. We got newspaper business. You, you may listen, listen, listen. I want to honestly thank you for coming here. Okay. And I hope that we can, you can, you can bring on other people. Let them come. Let them come one time, two times, three times. A week is fine. And let's have this type of uh, open discussion. Yes. So listen. I want, I want you. I want all our leaders to understand that we are in this thing together. And we are working for the same goal, for the betterment of all guys. Yeah, sure. But it's, I, I agree absolutely with all of this, but it's the accusation, because everybody, the newspaper is written in a way. I'm, I guess maybe to sell the newspaper no, to your no, newspaper no, man. No, no, no. But, but it's written in a way that sensationalizes technical and simplifies very technical issues. And, and often the answers to many of these questions are varied and nuanced. And you handpick people who fit in with your philosophy, and they get the prominence. And you can have a ton of other technical persons saying, they're giving an explanation, even a technical explanation, without finding the space in their newspapers. So I hope that's that the paper would be more balanced that's in that true. regard, too. That's not true. So thank you, that's, Kimal. That's right. not true. Kimal, Kimal, one second. That's not true. The only thing I walked in this way, the room with, is a few newspapers yesterday and today. Mm -hmm. And you said I don't have time, but I would show, I would read some of the headlines. Mm -hmm. You can save that. You can stay on the air and read your headlines <laughs> later. Right. Vice President, I have to go. Thank Listen. you for uh, coming on the show tonight. Right. Mr. Lal, thank you for facilitating. I just want to I just want to wish him a very merry Christmas and a solution a solution. Yeah. yeah. New year. 
in which we can find solutions to the to the to the issues that that plague um, these deals and these contracts, and see how we can how we can work together and we'll fix them to benefit us. Yes. So um, right. Th Christmas, th thank you. So right. Merry right. Christmas to you too. And, we and I hope the paper will be more balanced in the new year. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.